this body here for this practice, head and face, neck and shoulders, the arms, the trunk, the legs, the whole body, the whole body. As I welcome you to welcome yourself, as I welcome you to take this moment to, to take a deep breath into this here body, this vessel, this human form. As you check the volume levels and the sounds you might hear. Are those sounds and these sounds. These welcoming sounds, sounds to remind you that you have ears that hear. And the world is always making some sound, some noise out there in the busyness of the things that move. Everything from the weather to the other humans around. Listening to the sounds recognizing the ears that collect the sounds and the awareness, the awareness that it might make meaning, it might make judgment, might say, oh, that's pretty or oh, that's unpleasant. Just noticing all those details. present moment right here right now sounds and ears and awareness this threefold awareness of the sounds and the ears that collect the sounds and the awareness that makes sense of it Be here with this awareness. This awareness of the breath and the body and wherever the mind might be inviting the awareness to be here with this awareness of body and breath and this welcoming, taking this moment to welcome each of your toes, big toes, second, third, and fourth, and fifth toes on the right and the left. Inviting the soles of the feet and the heels. As you walk this path tonight, this path of a yoga practice, thanking the feet and the ankles, welcoming those lower legs and knees and thighs. Let the breath move into the hips, feel the breath in the in the expanse of the pelvis, in the sacrum and the tailbone. 
and feel the breath in the abdomen and the low back. Keep feeling and welcoming the breath in the trunk of the body, at the ribs and the rib cage, at the shoulder blades and in between them. Feel the ribs as they breathe in and breathe out. All the way to the armpits, all the way to the shoulders. Can you feel the breath in the shoulders? And inviting the breath down the upper arms and elbows, forearms, wrists, into each hand, a breath to the thumbs, right and left, index fingers, middle fingers, ring and little fingers. And breath in the arms and at the neck and the collarbones and the throat, the breath. Feel the breath in the head and the face. Be aware of the chin and the lips, the softness of the tongue and the mouth. And let the breath move through the nose. Be aware of the cheeks and eyes and eyebrows, the forehead. This body here for this practice, head and face, neck and shoulders, the arms, the trunk, the legs, the whole body, the whole body, the whole body, holding this awareness of the whole body, this welcome. And this gratitude to every part of this body for arriving here in this moment. And if you're sitting, you might slowly stretch out the legs. If you're sitting, you might find a, a sitting position with the legs straight. If you're lying down, you might stay right where you are. We're gonna go to the toes if, as we've gone many times. And that out of the way and setting up with an awareness of the toes, this awareness of the whole body, resting the whole body in this state of awareness. And with that awareness, the toes close down. With that awareness, you make foot fists and then draw the toes up and back. And with that awareness, forward and back, letting the toes awaken the feet moving slowly for the awareness to keep up and catch up and be along with the movement. Every movement is a movement of awareness in the toes and then in the ankles, letting the feet point and flex, reach and extend. Starting simple and then building on that simplicity into a rotation a little more complicated. You might choose to do the movements as mirror images of each other. You might choose to do the movements parallel to each other. You would go in one direction and then you'll switch and keep that going in the opposite direction. Slowing it down so that you're in that almost nidra state of awareness, that yogic sleep of complete knowing of where this body is moving, what it feels like, from the rotations to infinity symbols, letting the feet move around, up and over, up and over. In these infinity symbols in one direction, at least three, maybe five or six of them in one direction, and then you'll reverse and continue your exploration of the infinity at the level of the ankle in the opposite direction. So a few movements left, right, seeing what else your ankles might need, any sort of wiggles, flexes, reaches, movements. What does the those lowest extremities, what do those toes and ankles need? And we'll move on to the knees. If you're sitting, you might just lift and hold a leg and if you're lying down the same as possible right if you're lying down you might just hold a thigh to stabilize it and, and the movement of the leg is about the opening and the closing first and foremost we have the flexed knee and the extended knee so go ahead and explore and find that whether you're um, sitting or lying down extended leg folded leg where's the range of motion how does the knee feel throughout this movement and once that is established, once you have a good sense of that, from that up and down into a rotation. 
giving freedom to the hip to respond to this movement. And this might be something if you are dealing with a, a tight hip situation that, that beginning right at the knee, loosening the hips right from the knee and letting that hip respond. So you're reaching the foot in all the different re react re directions. The foot reaches in, the foot reaches out. It reaches up, it reaches down, and you're letting that stretch move into the inner thigh, up into the, into the hip socket, into the groin area as part of your practice. Circles in one direction, in the opposite directions. They might be circles, they might be teardrops. And then the number eight. So exploring the possibility of drawing the number eight, a little snow folk there, a little bubble bottom, bubble top. The number eight in one direction and reversing that, drawing the number eight with the foot as it backwards. And when you've done one side, you might have some other creative expressions. The knee might need to swing around or open and close a few times, feeling what it needs. And then comparing the two, taking a moment there before you switch sides to, to give yourself a moment to assess, to really recognize how these movements impact you, what they've done to the leg, up into the thigh, feel into the hips if you're sitting. Notice how the two sides compare in your, in your connection to the floor. And continuing on the other side when you're ready. Starting simple, starting with that open and closing. The most basic, joint flex, joint extended. Up and down. And sometimes that gives you interesting information. Sometimes you might hear all sorts of Little noises coming from the, the ligaments, the fascia, listening to the knee. And once that feels pretty smooth, pretty established, accessible, you begin an exploration of a, a roundabout sort of movement in one direction and in the opposite direction. And from the circles to figure eights to exploring the number eight as if the foot were a pencil or a paintbrush. You'll switch the direction of the eight at some point, let it reverse and continue in the opposite way. Seeing what other movements that other knee might need. I'm letting them rest when you feel complete. If you're sitting, you might use your hands to massage the kneecaps and the thighs a little bit. You might even like to get in there. If you're lying down, if you're lying down, you might bring both knees up and you might do this sitting too. You might bring both knees to your chest. The practice you just did with one leg at a time can be done with both legs together, opening and closing those legs. Drawing a rotation with both knees, finding the figure eight, you might explore that. Lying down might be a little easier, it might be a little less demanding on the strength, but certainly can be explored sitting as well. The sitting variation will demand more core strength as you're lengthening and making yourself tall throughout these movements. You might even need the support of the hands to keep you balanced and upright. So both knees together. And into the hips, into the hips. If you're sitting, you will lift a leg. You might turn it to the side. You might explore where it wants to point. Give your knee a little movement and exploration and you'll do rotations. Eventually you'll get to a place where it feels good to Draw a circle with the knee, which can be done lying down. Quite a supportive practice to do so, drawing a circle with the knee so the hip joint is the one in rotation. As a way to warm up and to access the hip flexors, the hip rotators, as well as the adductors. 
the iliotibial band, the IT band there with the part of the gluteus. So sitting or lying down, you're drawing rotations with one knee to mobilize that hip. Circles and explore what other shapes are there infinities available to that hip or or the figure eight or maybe just some funny wave shape some crooked smile of a shape what else can you draw with that hip before you give it a rest before you give it a moment to rest if you're sitting you might rest with both knees open in a butterfly position if you're lying down that might be something you enjoy as well this is a little more intense for the supine position. Sitting up, you can regulate the intensity by how close or far the feet are from the pelvic floor. And you might just hang out and breathe. You might fold forward and give yourself a stretch inside of this position. You might, if you're sitting, you might add a twist. You might add a little turn to the side to get also into the hip and to the sides there. And this might be one to even extend the arm. If you're dealing with issues along the, the underarm, the ribs, the back there, serratus, and uh, areas from behind the armpits to reach to the side and to let the arm be the guide to explore different opennesses, different positions. Lying down on the back, there might be a little bit of twisting, exactly, letting the knees and the, and the feet guide the way. So take a few moments here with wherever you are in the hips in these movements. We will come back to hip movements in our standing work and along the way on the cat work and the hands and knees so take a few moments to give the lower parts of you what you need and we'll focus on the hands wrists elbows shoulders and the neck in just a moment so let this transition be a moment for you to find what you need down here with the feet and the legs and you might choose to be sitting you might choose to lie down to work the upper extremities, the upper limbs. As you find that deep breath again, and again, finding this awareness of the whole body, again, finding that presence, like that state of yoga nidra, where you're just home to yourself, there is no past, there is no future. There is this moment right here and right now. With this breath, this arrival of nourishment, this inhale, and this ease with the exhale, this release and surrender with this exhale. Soften the body for a few breaths before we engage again, taking this moment to check in with the breath and the stillness bringing the hands into focus bringing the hands into the awareness tuck the thumbs in and wrap the fingers around your thumbs to make fists and pump those fists a little bit a few times to then pop those open and stretch them wide and continue in that way for at least three maybe five maybe six or seven repetitions Stretching and opening. The fingers and their fists and then stretching open that opening, I think is so important to find those spaces between each finger and you might even take a moment to extra explore. And then just folding the knuckles without folding the hand, so keeping the the palm open, you can even do a little closing and opening in the palm while the knuckles are closed. Check that out. A little exercise in the palm. Spreading everything out here as best as you can. 
There might be rotations, wiggling three or four times in each direction. We'll do it quickly for the class, but this might be something that you incorporate into your hand care. If you notice the hands are giving you signals that they're tired, that they're fatigued. I often heard people say, oh, it's arthritis, nothing you can do about it. What is arthritis? It's an inflammation of the joint. Why? I think it's because there might be a misalignment and there could be an exercise to realign things. There could be an exercise to help deliver oxygen and nutrients to that site of inflammation to help heal it. So this is what we're doing. We're preventing and working to heal arthritic conditions in the hands, in the wrists. All these joint movements increase synovial fluid production, making soft fists and letting these rotations move around, around and around in one direction and the other direction, changing from the left to the right to the right to the left. And infinities getting fancy with the wrists now. Oh, a little bit of a brain game to coordinate that and to change direction. In the wrists, in the wrists, in the wrists. And then we take it out to the elbows by lengthening, straightening the arms and folding, closing the arms. So we'll go in a bunch of different directions. I find that the elbows and the shoulders benefit from variety, but let's begin in this straightforward manner wherever you are and then out to the sides if that space is there, if the room you are in accommodates so reach out to the sides and up overhead if that's available if your shoulders feel good with that and this one is partly a shrug when your hands go up let your let your shoulders go up and then let them especially drop and go down as the as the hands come to the arm to the shoulders so you're being aware of the movement through the sockets there in the shoulder joints through the shoulder blades if you have the room behind you, reach behind. It might just be your elbows. It might be the arms straightening out back there. Superhero cape. Oh, yeah. Can you be tall? If you're sitting, can you not hinge forward? Can you actually lean back and reach back? Like you're on the, what is that, ship head, the figureheads, right? Titanic. We all need it. Yep. Next time your shoulders are little fingers end up on your shoulders, keep them there. And let them come together. This is the rounded. This is the, the closing position. But this is the one we're after. We're after that opening. We're after that superhero cape stretching through the tops of the chest, through the pec muscles, bringing those elbows towards each other. Curling them in, giving them the reprieve, the slack, and then stretching them open, stretching them out, trying to touch those elbows to each other. That's right. Crazy business. One of these days, one of us is going to do it. You're going to be like, oh, my elbows touched in the back. Big, 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 a few times big, and then you'll start to draw circles, getting the armpits in on it, opening through those armpits. The eyes, they're like the eyes of the shoulders. Awaken the shoulders by opening the armpits. The sleepy eyes are wide open. As you draw these circles in one direction, when you feel satisfied, change the direction, go the other way. Around and around. And then into those eight into those bubbly figure eights, however big you can make those bubbles. At least three, maybe more, and then changing the direction. Oh boy. Just simple joint movements, no big deal. Resting as you need to rest, that's right, and going into any other movements if you feel called to I see some swimming action happening. That's great. I see some arms resting, and I think that's a great idea. Some arms are getting into some elbow stuff with interlaced fingers. We didn't do elbow rotations. Some of you might love those and might be feeling like you're missing them. 
check out the arms, the arms, the hands, the shoulders. What else might they need? We'll do a few practices for the neck. And then we'll get into the cat poses and we'll go on our bellies today to address some of those deeper back muscles. This is a theme for many of us. So most important and welcome to work with that. Yeah, take a moment for your arms, sort out your shoulders. Find an upright position to move the head, to move the head comfortably forward and back. And you can do this laying on the floor. If you're in that kind of a zone today, no shame, let your body rest. And you can make small movements of a forward and back. If you're laying on the floor, it might just involve lengthening the back of the neck and bringing the chin in. If you're sitting, that might be a bigger sort of slow motion yes that you're doing. You might even like to add the weight of your hands if you're sitting and this is especially tense part of your body, the neck takes a lot, you might just rest the, the weight of the hands and the stretch, not pushing, very gentle. Getting clear on what feels good, honoring the, the signals of the body. You are the boss here. You make the decisions to these suggestions in the physical response, in the mental, in the ambition too. Check that you're in that soft, kind space of serving your body, of tending to the kind, the kindness towards yourself. Left to right is next, bringing the head up to the center and moving the ears towards the shoulders up and over. Like drawing a little horseshoe, a little rainbow with the nose. And keeping tall, check that you're tall in the waist and in the neck and the low and steady in the shoulder blades. And this too, this might be hang out and, and let the side of the neck lengthen for a few breaths. There might be a little yes gesture, a little nod inside of the side bend. That might be what you need today. And there might also be the weight of the arm. There might be the opposite arm, elbow, towards the crown of the head, sort of just giving it weight, giving it a little, a little extra. If you know that's appropriate and feels good for your body. So if that's true, that's the head, the head, the hand in the direction that the head is pointing. It wraps around and lands on top. That's a little more comfortable than this one, right? That's... So if your head is pointing left, it's the left arm that wraps over and gets to the right ear. And if your head is pointing right, it's the right arm that stretches out and over and wraps over to the left ear. And it might just be a little movement right and left, left and right. We've got the twist coming next in their set of four for the neck. As you arrive at the center, we're gonna little twist side to side. Turning to look behind, turning to look behind. After the twists, and you might continue as you need, arriving at the center for a rotation. Letting the nose draw a circle, a spiral, slowly, small, loosen the jaw. You might even let little pockets of air show up in the cheeks, little air mouthwash. In this rotation in one direction, changing and moving it in the opposite direction. After a pause, at least three times, slow, slow, slow. What's it feel like today? And when you're ready, 
drawing an infinity symbol with your nose, taking the neck into that more nuanced, more subtle pattern. And when you've done at least three, maybe four or five, you'll change the direction. You'll switch and go the other way. And then you'll come to stillness. You'll take a few breaths. You'll arrive from these activities. You might feel a little swimmy in the head. Take a moment to ground to feel the earth beneath you, to feel the tall spine and the good breath. And with the joints addressed, we'll move to the hands and knees. If you're willing and able to get onto the floor in this cat position, and you can do what I show you also sitting down, but letting that be a, a floor position to begin with, if you're available to that, starting by warming it up classic style. Classic, classic, simple, simple. Forward bend and backward bend. A few times to warm up and then taking it where you need it. That might be a hula hoop in the hips. And that might be a bit of a looking behind you, twisty side sort of thing. And you might have all sorts of organic movements, all sorts of, ah, just get in between the shoulder blades or over here. Or if I reach there, it's going to feel good. Exploration. Any of you who live with cats know that they shamelessly stretch and move their bodies in the ways that feel helpful to them. And they'll let us be of similar comfort. As you explore, you explore the position of each hand and arm, see what taking it further or closer might do, might offer what you're working on. If you've got some hip tightness, you might like to hang in sort of a, a cobra position or even lengthen out into cobra or easy cobra on the elbows. This might be what you take this time to do. And you might need the opposite. You might need to fold up. You might like your body to be closed in the hips. Let me assure you that there's no wrong way to be, no wrong way to treat your body if you're approaching it with kindness. And we will do some of the back strengthening and we're adding today the psoas stretch. So as you find your movements here in cat pose, bring them down at some point, you are invited to extend from the front of the body. We'll begin with a opposite side, lifting the limbs, right arm, left leg. On the inhale from a straight long body, the right arm and the left leg and the head and shoulders lift up. Hold for a count or two and release. Alternate sides, left arm, right leg. Lift for a moment and lower. Challenging your whole leg to lift, challenging the strength there of the glutes and the buttock muscles, the low back and the mid back. This is back strengthening work back strengthening work to support an upright posture opposite arm and leg lifting up contracting the back that lift is what builds the muscle you might need to rest and you might like to do this pose with both arms and both legs lifting arms and legs from the floor Doing at least three repetitions. And coming into rest.
You might rest long, the head might be on the floor, you might turn so that a cheek is on the floor rather than the forehead. You might use an arm as a support that might feel good for your, your specific body. And feel the belly against the floor. Feel the breath coming deep into the trunk. Inviting the breath into the hips, into the pelvis. As you feel how the front of the legs is supported, feel where the legs touch the ground, where the belly touches the ground. And you're invited to come up onto the elbows, into the sphinx pose, into this easy cobra. So lifting and that superhero cape thing continues. You're opening wide through the collarbones, the shoulder blades come together in the back like you're flying a cape. And this might be your practice today. You might get lots of stretch through the front of the body. You might feel the work of the back strengthening, compressing. And if it feels good to you, you'll walk the elbows a little bit to the side. So the forearms stay parallel, but the elbows took a little walk to the side and that's gonna help stretch the psoas. If you feel that around the low back, down by the waist, around the hips, this is good. You're lengthening, you're tall, you're wearing your superhero cape, you're wide in the fronts of the shoulders and the collarbones and the shoulder blades are together in the back. Take a few breaths at one side, walk back to the center and walk to the other side with the elbows, the elbows and the forearms stay parallel. And take your time with this one. You might hang out in that twisted, curious sort of off to the side position, you might feel something nice happening around the belly, around the waist. Take a few breaths there. You're in your back bend, you're reaching tall. You might need rest. You might need to return to the center and ease and rest. You might need to continue. You might notice a difference between one side and the other, and you might like to spend an extra few breaths over on the side that feels tighter, giving the side that needs a little more, giving it that exactly that what it needs. So let that be your breath, let that be your, your work, your heavy through the thighs, you're connected to the ground, through the hips, and you're tall and lengthening wherever you are. You're wearing your superhero cape. And you're welcome to continue with this cobra, this twisting sort of curious sphinx variation of cobra for the psoas muscle. We'll be going into a mountain pose, a downward dog next. So you might like to rest, fold it up. You might like to give your body a reprieve from those efforts, or you might like to set up on the hands and knees. You might like to fold up all the way into a child's pose. That might be your thing. You might need that for a moment, or you might like to set up and be on the hands and knees. There's no rush and there's no hurry. You'll get there when you get there. Don't rush to be there any faster. When you're ready, you'll tuck the toes under and you'll lift the knees into that downward position. And hopefully this position is an old friend, an old familiar. You might do it against the wall if the shoulders or the sides are not having it today. If you're on the floor, you're exploring it, you're making sure it's alive, you might, you might be bending a little bit at the knees, you might be walking in place, you might be reaching with the heels and the tail.
Take your time with exploring what is even possible. What can you do up here? What does it feel like to maybe to reach a leg? Let your body guide you here wherever and however long you need to be upside down or resting if you need to come back down or if you got that signal that that's enough and your body's ready to be upright in its human vertical position. Find your way up. And keep that cape on. Check that you came up with your superhero cape. And that expanse through the shoulder blades and the collarbones. There was a moment some years ago when I had a client who was in his 80s who came in and he was, he came in so upright. I said, what is your secret? Sort of joking, but he goes, I'll tell you my secret. And he, he got real flat against the wall. He stood up against the wall. He put his heels against the wall. He goes, I do this every morning. I get real flat against the wall. So if you have a wall, find that real flat. And he goes, and I take one step forward, trying to keep that shape of the wall. So. There's a little thing you can do throughout the day, right? As if as you feel yourself becoming less human, find that wall, get yourself against the wall and take one step forward, right? So keeping that upright wall, tall, tall wall position. And if you would like, interlace your fingers right there with that tall wall back, opening through the armpits, Lifting, if you feel like it, you come up on the toes. That's an optional, make you even taller. Reaching up and letting that go. Lifting up lowering down. You might go up and stay. That might be your thing to reach and to keep reaching. You might like to go up and down, but you're lengthening your job and your game right now is to be how tall can you make the back of the neck? How tall can you be between the hips and the ribs? What can you do in the in the pelvic orientation in the in the tilt, right? To be taller. In that straight up and down orientation. We'll go side to side next. When you're ready, you step wider. You might keep the arms together. That might be your thing to keep the arms long and above you. I like the variation with the arms low. That's just what I like in my body, but there's no wrong way to do this. Find what works in your body. Maybe you like a middle of the road, sort of one arm option. Same thing though, same thing though. If you have the, the wall nearby, get that, that idea of, of what the straight and tall position is and keep it, right? Because I think especially with the side bend, there's no, there's no benefit to going low. If you go low, you will turn into a forward bend, right? So keeping that side bend up and tall, your, your superhero cape, and you might just go a little bit low. It might not be a very deep, 
side, but you're keeping that plane. You're keeping that straight, tall shoulders over the hips. Alignment. There you go. Side to side and the twists are next with your wide position in the feet and the opening of the body. Stretching that, expanding that and when you're ready, wrapping that up. Twisting and allowing the arms to wrap around as you look behind. Stretch open and look behind. You might go fast, you might go slow. Check your alignment, check your, your posture, and check your awareness that you are in this present state in a collaboration with the body, responding to its needs and limitations. As you complete these three standing movements, the straight up and down, the side to side, the twist, you come into stillness, into center. We'll do a forward backward band combo. And this forward back combo might be for you, the first three pieces of the sun salutation. If that's your jam, that's what you do. You might keep it simple and a little softer. You might keep it with the arms low and just a uh, a rounding to the knees. It doesn't have to be some big movement for this to be helpful. Reaching, rounding. It might be a bigger movement if you so choose it to be. And some of you might like to do this with the arms interlaced behind. You might find that for your body and what you need today, you want those arms behind, bringing the elbows and the shoulder blades towards each other. This can be the back and this can be the front bend combination. You might include this variation in your practice today. Finding even more of that superhero cape by Bringing the arms together as if they were the cape in the back. Wee! The wind blowing through that cape. Defying gravity. Let me have these variations. Seeing what your body needs in that front and back combo. Front and back, reaching one way, reaching the other. Coming to the center for a breath. We'll do a couple more things standing before we shift down to the, the breathing practice and the nidra. So as you finish this forward and back combination, We'll do a little bow and arrow action. So coming into your wide stance again, letting the heels pivot. The back leg is comfortable. The front leg decides you might choose to engage and bend through the knee. You might make this even more of a stretch for the inner thigh. This might be what you need. And so that might be where your work is today. Or you might keep the legs straight. You might really be focused on the shoulders and what's happening in here. So set the bottom parts of your body up with awareness, find what it feels like, what are the different possibilities in the hips. And as you sort that out, you find your target, you find your bow and arrow and your focus, your single pointed eye gaze. And play with that tension, play with that, oh, I've got the tension building, I've got this muscle strength, I'm holding, I'm pulling, oh my goodness, it's so much. And then poof, everything softens and relaxes as you shoot those arrows. 
shoot away. Bow and arrow on the one side. When you're ready for a switch, you can pivot on the heels. Keep feeling, keep noticing, keep checking in with yourself, fine tuning and adjusting. We'll have a balanced posture before we go down. So take a moment to feel what other physical big movements you might need. Is there anything that your body is letting you know that it wants to do? Shaking it out, dancing it out, spinning it out. We'll do a balancing pose. We'll go back to something we, we used to do this one in, a little while ago, and now we're coming back to it. It's sort of a right angle balancing pose in that the two arms are up in angles at the elbows, and one arm is going to be up and the other arm is going to be down. And on the side with the arm up, you're going to bring that knee up and out. So we've got right angles and the two elbows and one knee. Focus gaze, focus eyes, tall through the back. The challenge in this pose is to find those angles to really straighten out through the upper arms out at the woo, out at the shoulders. Letting the sides switch with your own balance switches as you feel one side saying enough you'll take it to the other side at least two rounds at least twice on each side alternating as you do As you complete this balance piece, as you find the right and the left, at least twice, maybe three times on each side, see what else you need, check in with your body, take a moment to assess, and prepare for the more internal piece of our time together. As we shift into 
a breathing practice followed by a yoga nidra. The invitation is for you to get as comfortable as you know how, as organized into ease as you're able to. This is the moment to get a blanket, a cushion, a pillow. It's warm today, and as you rest, as you come into stillness, your body will cool down. So you might have something nearby for that comfort. As you shift back into the speed of your breath, the speed of your heartbeat, and the speed of all the organs in the body feeling into that speed of the liver and the spleen and the pancreas and the kidneys and the intestines and the bladder, the colon, sort of dropping down into that awareness of the speed of things inside of the body. All sorts of rhythms. There might be a rhythm of the heartbeat that you're feeling and hearing, the pulse. You might be feeling some digestive rhythms. You might be feeling some movements in the trunk of the body. You might feel the rhythm of the breath. Let yourself listen just outside of the body. If you could listen to the space that's one inch around the body, listening there for any rhythm, any speed or pace. Listen to the movement of the breath in this softness of the body. As you listen into an even slower rhythm, the rhythm of the cerebral spinal fluid, it's got a, a rhythm of about 90 seconds or more in each direction, it's subtle. So you might you might just think about it. It might not be something you can tap into and feel. Slower than the breath, slower than the heartbeat. There's a movement of fluid in the spinal cord. It travels downward for about 90 seconds. And then I'll travel upward. So just know that's there. Know that there are rhythms even slower than the breath to connect with, to tune into. And so you're encouraging the breath to slow down as you do so. You're watching the breath, you're listening. And let the practice today continue to be this interrupted, this progressive breath that will move into an ujjayi. Pranayam. So if it sounds good to you, if it feels okay to do so, let yourself pause part way into the inhale and continue the same inhale. So the inhale has at least two parts, maybe three or more parts. You might pause multiple times along the way of the inhale. Pausing a little bit. And breathing in and pausing and breathing in and pausing to fill up the chest, to fill up the, the lungs. This is a practice of expanding your capacity. So 
So you're breathing deeper and deeper. You might allow just deep breaths if that's what you're feel like, feeling like, or you might do these progressive, these interrupted breaths where you pause partway into the inhale and keep going into the inhale and pause and fill up and pause. Inviting as deep of a breath, as full of a breath, as expanded of a capacity that you find accessible. Inviting this body to receive, 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 receive the oxygen for the hips and the legs, for the belly and the back, for every rib, for every muscle between every rib. Inviting this breath. And allowing it to fall into its natural rhythm, allowing it to move into its ongoing arrival and departure, the smoothness of the natural breath. Focus on the throat, be aware of the space of the throat. And if you're familiar with Ujjayi, allow the throat to pattern itself in that way so you can make that whisper that baby snore and if you're just learning this breath that's the game that's the experiment is to to put the throat in a pattern as if to make the letters a h breathing in or h a breathing out but not making the sound just allowing that muscular pattern to hold in the throat while you breathe as if you were pulling in the air through the throat and pushing it back out through the neck, through the throat. And inviting this breath into the expanse that you just found into the lungs and the belly. Creating that whisper of a sound, if that's available to you, the whisper of the sound of the breath keeps the attention of the mind. The mind rides that sound like riding a little boat in the ocean of the breath. Be aware, be here, be with the breath. And please prepare now for the practice of yoga nidra. Please prepare for our relaxation, guidance, healing practice, practice of restoring rhythm, the rhythm of our brain waves that get wound up and fast and speedy. And in this practice, we are modulating our brainwave activity to a mellow, slower amplitude, a slower frequency. And those of us who might live with animals might wonder how they keep so cool and mellow, and it is a brainwave 
function, our cats and our dogs are often in that state of awareness that yoga nidra brings us into. So they're in that all's well kind of happy place in their brain frequency. And when we have thoughts and when we have racing thoughts, literally they do race in their wave and what they create as far as a pattern. And so in this practice, we slow down the mind by inviting it deeply back into the body by embodying awareness. This practice of yoga nidra begins with the body, situating your human form comfortably, whatever that means today. Let me assure you there's no wrong way. You can be lying down, sitting up. The invitation is to be supported. Whatever choices you're making to have what you need, to feel like you can let go, like you don't have to hold on, that you are off the hook. This body is supported. This body is held. Gravity here on earth is working today. And you can trust that this body will be held. And listen here, listen to what is calling the attention. Are there sounds around you? Is the world making noise? Are there sounds nearby? Are there sounds of the body? Signals, sensations of the body, listen to the whole body. How do the feet and the legs feel at this moment? How are the hips and pelvis? And if there's any way to be more comfortable in the trunk of the body, at the back, at the belly, at the chest, at the shoulder blades, allow for that, allow for that comfort to increase if it's available for the arms and elbows and wrists and hands. Feeling that softness arrive to the back of the head and to the features of the face. As you allow the forehead and the eyebrows, the eyes and the cheeks, the nose and the lips to find their neutrality, their quiet expression, no effort. Just a simple contentment, maybe kind of like a secret smile across the face. Illuminating your inner landscape. We have a full moon coming this week on Wednesday that great light of moon. Letting the smile of your inner world be like the moonlight that reflects the power of the sunlight in its more quiet form. And the third eye, the eye in the mind, the eye between the eyebrows inside of the head opens to gaze upon the inside of the body, gaze upon the head and the face. And there's an eye at the level of the throat, this eye of communication, of expression, of sweetness that opens at the throat. And the heart has an eye, maybe even two, letting the eyes of the heart awaken and open as the physical eyes on the face are closed inward 
Let the gaze of the heart open and look upon this inner landscape, the inner world of this inner body. Down to the solar plexus just above the navel and down to the sacral plexus just below the navel. Be aware of these wisdoms of the body, the places that see the inside, gazing to the heart, to the solar plexus, to the sacral plexus, into the pelvic bowl. And let the awareness move down again to the feet, again to the toes, big toes, second toes, third toes, left and right, fourth and fifth. Soles of the feet and the two heels, the two ankles and the lower legs, calves and shins. Be aware of the knees, left and right, thighs, buttocks, hips. Be aware of the pelvis, the sacrum, the low back and the low belly the navel and the upper belly. Be aware of the chest on the right, on the left, and the breastbone at the center. Follow the ribs around the body to the back and the shoulder blades right and left and the space between the shoulder blades and the space above the shoulder blades. Awareness moves out to the armpits right and left shoulders, upper arms, elbows, forearms, wrists and hands, the two thumbs, index fingers, middle fingers, ring fingers and little fingers. Be aware of the arms, to the collarbones, to the hollow between, to the neck and throat. And this awareness fills the head from the chin and lips to the mouth, into the cheeks and nose, to the ears right and left, and the eyes, the eyebrows, and the eyebrow center forehead and the top of the head. Awareness and welcome and thank you to the head and face and thank you to the neck and shoulders and arms and trunk and the two legs together, the whole body, the whole body, the whole body. Be aware of the whole body, the whole body, the whole body. Resting and breathing this whole body here in the awareness that is yoga nidra, the whole body, the whole body. Resting and breathing, the most important is happening right here. This is life, this body in awareness, in breath, in welcome of itself, this body in appreciation of itself, the awareness home, home to the feet and legs, to the hands and arms, to the trunk and the neck and the head together, the whole body. Resting and breathing the whole body, the whole body. And let the mind collect and be aware of any aches or pains, any discomforts that the body might be holding. Notice, physically scan 
and collect where the body is uncomfortable. What's it feel like letting the awareness find the least comfortable place? Holding an awareness of this place that is least comfortable. What's that feel like? Welcome this discomfort. Let this body be uncomfortable in this way, be welcoming even of this discomfort, embrace and find a little bit of love for this struggle, for this pain, this tension, welcoming even this to the human experience, to the, to the mix. Acknowledging that it's there. Thank you. And looking also to find where the body's most comfortable. Where is the body at its best ease? Where does the body feel good? Being aware, where does the body feel good? What does that feel like? What does comfort in this body feel like today? Where is it and what does it feel like? Welcoming it, welcoming this comfort and inviting the comfort to spread into the greater expanse of the body, even into the dis discomfort. Share the comfort with the discomfort, invite that ease into the tension. Welcome the comfort, welcome the ease. Awareness of this whole body. Nourishing itself, this whole body, acknowledging the discomfort, welcoming a greater comfort, expanding that comfort into the whole body, the whole body, the whole body together. The whole body together. How do I wish to feel? How can I expand that comfort? How can I dwell in ease? Inviting that in, dwelling in ease. Every breath a healing. The whole body. the whole body. If it feels good, you might stay there. This might be where you remain. And you might choose to emerge you might choose to complete this practice to end this piece of the evening and come out of this state of awareness. If you're choosing to do so, go slowly. Be aware of sounds again. Reinvite the senses. Listen and feel, feel the breath and feel the shape and the position of the body. You might deepen the breath before making the smallest movements in the tongue and the eyes. You might touch the fingertips to the thumb one at a time, index, middle, fourth, and little. 
see what you need and let your body be cared for in that most loving, gentle way. You might need to just be there for a few breaths. You might want to roll to the side or hug your body. You might touch the eyebrows and the forehead gently to, to awaken. And there's no rush and there's no hurry and there's no way to do this wrong. So take your sweet time in your awakening and kindness to yourself. This is healing. Thank you for showing up. Thanks for being here. And our practice is complete. Thank you for watching. Please like the video and leave a comment about your experience. And while you're here, please subscribe to my channel and opt in for notifications to catch the next class I upload. And then head over to olgaschwa.com to join in a live event or to work one-on-one -on -one with me. I'm here to help.